Hi everybody. In this video, I want to take a look at something that I think is really, really, really cool and not talked about a huge amount, and that is the export to D5 button within Blender. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it can do, what it can't do, and um, talk about how you can use it in your own projects going forward. All right, let's get into it. All right, everybody. So here we are in Blender, and I'm using Blender. This is version 3.3 LTS, or long-term support. This is the most recent version of Blender that the D5 Blender Converter actually supports. Now, I know the newer version is in the works, but right now, if you want to use Blender, you do have to use the 3. Point, uh, what is this? 3.3 version. So not the 3.5, and definitely not if you get your hands on the 4 just yet. All right. Looking at this, I've got my default Blender scene set up here. I'm actually using one of the scale measurements that used to come with the older version of SketchUp. And I just find that useful to have a scale measure in there. All right, if we go over to the right tab here where it says D5, and the D5 exporter is actually installed as a sort of extension or plugin. You'll find all of those under Edit and Preferences and then add-ons. And you can see right here, we've got the D5 converter. Now we do have to download this from the D5's website and install it when Blender and D5 are not running. And what you'll get is a tab over here. Now, you'll notice we've got a couple of things. We do have a sync button. We also have material bake, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then we have export to D5, and this is the one I wanna focus on today. All right, with that being said, what use is this? Well, the export to D5 will allow you to send over not just specifically your scene, that's really what the sync button is going to do, but we're talking about exporting actual objects from Blender straight over to D5. Let's take a look at that really quickly. I'm gonna delete my scale mesh, and then I'm gonna go to iMesh. Now, I have tested this with a bunch of different assets, uh, I'm going to use iMesh models because I've talked about them before. I think they're really, really good. They're quite affordable for what you get, and the standard is really, really high. So what I'm going to do is go to my decoration tab here, and I'm going to open up these pots right here. I'm going to hit append and bring them into the scene, and tap S to just scale them up a little bit. Now, they don't look great in the viewport, but if we turn on sort of the real-time mode within Blender, sort of like the high-resolution viewport shading, you can see these look really, really, really good. They're metallic pots. You can see they've got a really nice bit of weathering on them as well. I think they look absolutely great. Okay, so what use is this? Well, these assets are technically D5 format. They're, I'm sorry, they're Blender format. I want to get them over to D5. And so what I'm going to do is really just go to the D5 here and click export to D5. Now, before you do this, this is super important, you have to save. So I'm gonna go file, I'm gonna go save as, and I'm just gonna call this um, pots, pots, no bake. And I'll get to the, I'll explain that in a second. Just pots, no bake, save it wherever your documents. You have to do that, otherwise you'll get a Python export error, which it was really frustrating because it took me forever to figure out what was going on. Save your work. All right, hit the giant export to D5 button and it'll ask you where you want to export it. Just, there's no real options. It's not FBX or OBJ export, just hit export. And you can see it takes a second. Now in D5, it's not syncing. This is not the sync button. We've just exported in the D5 format. And so we can go over here to import and I'm going to go to my downloads. Uh, nope, documents. And I got way too much stuff in here. Pots, no bake. Click on it. And you can see it'll come in the import in the bottom left. Just click there and place left click to place in your scene. Now, I think this is so, so cool. And I don't really feel like like the D5 developers realize how cool this is. And certainly not many people seem to be talking about it. And I'll show you why it, it's, it's really, really cool. Let's hit I on the keyboard to sample the material. And you can see on the right-hand side, look at this. We've got a base color map. And let's just take a look at that here. We've got a normal and we've got a roughness and we've got a metallic. So... What I think it's doing is taking the Blender file format with materials. So, for example, if we go back to Blender here, 
and I'm going to just get out of this preview mode here. Just go back to the default sort of viewport mode. And so out of the preview mode, if we take a look here at the shading, sort of the shading nodes that iMesh used for this model, you can see it's a principled BSDF, sort of the default blender PBR material setup, but it's managed to export everything else, the normal map, the color map, and the roughness map. And I think that's really, really, really cool. Okay, the other thing to note about this is under UV editing, you can see we're lucky this pot and all three of these spots were nicely laid out UV wise, which is very, very important as well. But all in all, this is absolutely brilliant. I mean, you can now really easily transfer content directly from Blender straight over to D5 with hopefully most of the materials intact. I think it's really, really cool. And you'll notice the quality is transferable. So whatever the quality of the original asset is, you're going to get that transferred right over. Now, you may be thinking, well, why don't we just bake our materials and send them over? And that is the other option here. Let's go back to just the layout tab here. And you can see we have the D5 material bake. Now, here's kind of the problem with this. If you have auto UVs turned on, what the converter do will we'll effectively use the auto unwrap. It's the smart UV unwrap that comes within Blender. So let's take a look at what happens when we do that. I'm going to do a 1K. Let's do 2K actually. Using auto UVs default and I'm going to hit bake. Now this will take a second. Obviously a 2K texture is four times bigger than a 1K, not double. And the same for 4K is obviously exponentially larger. Now it did bake them. But one thing that'll be interesting here, if we go to UV editing, and it looks okay, let's export this and look at just the quality difference. So I'm going to go export to D5, and I'm going to call this pots with bake. Okay. It'll export, won't take very long. You'll get a nice little warning message saying it's done. Go back to D5, go import, and this time we'll go pots with bake, and let's take a look at the difference here. And I think this is really, uh, really kind of important to be aware of. All right. On the left, the original. On the right, the bake. I'm going to turn off the auto exposure here really quickly. Just maybe that will help a little bit. And just drop that down. There we go. Okay. Now you can kind of see the effect we're getting here. Overall, the quality and just sort of the fidelity, the object on the left is just a lot better. It's exported out at, I think, the, the right texture size, which is what the iMesh models were set to, which is probably, I think, 4K textures. And you can just see, in terms of detail, it just looks better. It looks a lot less washed out than really the material baking. And you're just getting all that fine detail. Now, some of that is texture size. So, for example, we can go here to our documents, and you'll see there's a D5 bake textures file here. So I right click on that and go properties. We can see details. It's 2048, which is what we set it to. And they're just, it's just not as good. Quite simply, the better way to do this is just export the model. Now, the bake might serve a function if the export doesn't bring over all the materials. But honestly, I think it's just so much easier. Just hit the giant export button and load it in. The cool thing is, I'm going to delete the pots without any bake here. Yes, I'm going to delete them. And let's just go back to pots no bake. So let's hit delete on this guy. The really cool thing about this now is now that these are in your D5 scene, we can just right click and we should be able to there. Under objects, right click and add to local. And now this is really, really cool because once they're in your local library, you can access them from the assets tab under local. And I think that's really, really, really cool. So let's take another example really quickly. I'm going to go uh, File and New. And we're just going to clear out the scene. Go File and New. And again, let's load up just another asset from iMesh. Uh, by the way, I'm not affiliated with iMesh. I don't know the people responsible, but I just think their content is, you know, really, really good. Okay, so let's take another example. When will this sort of not necessarily work? And so I'm going to go to uh, bathroom and I'm going to open up this pot section, append. 
and I'm going to hit S and I'm going to scale this up. Now, this is a much more complicated looking object. There's a lot more kind of like stuff going on here. Let's take a look at what happens when we go to back to D5 and we go export to D5. I'm going to call this uh, water pot. I'm, I'm sure there's a better name for this. Water pot is what it is. Okay. And we'll run it through the export. You can see there are going to be some limitations on this. And what I'll do is I'll turn on the uh, Blender sort of real-time mode so you can see what this should look like. And then we'll look at it in D5. All right. Export was successful. So here it is. Okay. Looks really, really, really cool. You can see a couple of things. The caustics and the water is looking really great. And a lot of the detail is there. It looks really, really nice. Now let's see what happens when we send it over to D5. So again, we're going to go import and we're going to do uh, water pots. And it should import really, really quickly. But it'll be a slight issue. Hit S and I'm going to scale this up again. There we go. Select it. V and scale up. Okay, you can see a lot of the materials transfer it over. If I put a light in our scene, you can kind of see I'm even getting the fidelity from the coin right there, which it's just, oh, it's so cool. Now, you'll also notice the water has come over as well, and you are getting that effect going on, that sort of uh, caustic kind of displacement effect going on. Now, one area that is a little bit problem are the leaves here. And if I uh, click on this material, you can kind of see why I moved myself out of the way. The base color map did transfer over, but what is missing is the opacity map. And for example, if I change this to one with a custom alpha material, I do have the ability to place an opacity map in there, but I'm not really going to have uh, sort of anywhere I can do that. And so that is one thing you might lose is anything to do with an opacity. You could always add your own opacity map, but there's no guarantee that it will line up perfectly UV-wise, and I haven't tested to see if it will. However, if you're just using this for decoration purposes, you could happily come in here and just change the color of these leaves or adjust them or get rid of, basically delete the original map that's there, and now you can come up with something a little bit more decorative. So it does work quite well it's just that certain things not so great the last thing i want to mention is bringing in other objects as well so let's do that really quickly back in blender i'm just going to do uh let's just delete all this and we're going to go file import and so i'm going to import an fbx file as a model that i downloaded from uh cg trader and i'm going to just download this here in a second and i think this was in my downloads and i think wall plant fbx okay all right so here we have another downloaded model again check it out in the actual viewport and you can see it looks pretty pretty good so we can also do this by material baking so this is an object that i got from online let's say we do want to go ahead and make this into a 4k we can happily do that using the auto UVs. Let's take a look at the result. Let's hit bake and see what happens. All right. So the bake at 4K has completed. And over here on the UV tab, you can see how the D5 converter effectively, uh, using basically the smart or auto unwrap within Blender, has created an okay UV layout. You 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 know, it's it's all in all. It's not video game level quality, but for a lot of users of D5, that's good enough, is going to be good enough. And so I think all in all, this looks pretty nice. Let's go back to layout. And again, I'm going to now just export this asset. And again, this is not an IMESH asset. This is one just completely grabbed uh, from CG Trader, export it, and I'm just going to call this uh, thing and hit export and so what i'm trying to get to here is the ease at which you can take assets from other libraries and send them over to d5 now let's take a look at this i'm just going to go import and i'll go to this should be in documents plants thing 
and just load it up. Gonna place this right here. And I hit V and let's scale this up. And there you go. All in all, I think the end result is just really, really impressive. And I mean, that was baked at 4K, really didn't take a huge amount of time to actually bake this. And I think it's just unbelievably cool that the D5 kind of exporter just allows you to create all the maps that you might potentially need. Now, one potential downside to this is when you bake something, you're effectively committing all of the color, normal, roughness information into that singular object. If you were to come in here now and try to change maybe the material on this, say for example, you wanted to change this, I don't know why you would want to do blue silicone, but let's do that. You can kind of see it's only going to kind of do that. You, you do lose the ability to customize the individual elements, but still, all in all, I think that's just so cool, especially if you want to use assets from outside the D5 library. Now, I would find this very useful if, for example, a client has a specific request for furniture. Uh, now, that's something you could get from CG Trader, or if you just like the look of other decorative elements. I think it's just an unbelievably cool feature, and I, I really feel like a lot of people don't seem to use it or don't seem to be aware of the export to D5 feature. I think it's really great, and um, hopefully you guys will find it useful too. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. If you've made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.